And from that, on the 21st of February, the motion that is before, that has led us to this hallowed house, was moved and duly seconded. And as would be expected, this motion should have been put to the county assembly to debate and make their determination. However, this is not what occurred. A motion to adjourn the proceedings was duly moved, not seconded, and I wish to underline that that motion was never seconded. But this notwithstanding, the motion was in unclear circumstances that one cannot decipher from the answer. Determined and an adjournment duly issued. This adjournment, I wish the court to note, was contrary to the standing orders of that particular county government, which requires the motion to be moved and determined within three days. By the 24th of February 2024, that motion, having not by automatic operation of the law, we submit that from the 24th moving forward, there was nothing. The motion and everything that was voted upon on the 29th of February 2024 was nothingness. And from that, this honorable house has been called to determine whether there's a valid impeachment. And we duly submit, given these grave lapses, that the motion and the impeachment as a whole was a house built on quicksand, foundationless, and this court must, as the big bad wolf did, blow that house down. Most obliged. I will now call my senior, Mr. Katwa Keegan, to conclude the submissions. Mr. Speaker, sir, honorable senators, I would like to start uh, my submissions by just highlighting the main issues that we would like you to take into account in making the determination as to whether, as to whether or not you should come to the conclusion that a case of impeachment has been achieved. But our biggest emphasis, uh, honorable senators, is that one, you maintain your mind on the question of whether a standard of proof has been achieved in these allegations against the uh, deputy governor. And number two, that the burden of proving that indeed there were these bridges was on the uh, county assembly. Correlated to that is that the case should not, your decision on whether or not to impeach should not be on a basis of what is newly introduced in the course of these proceedings, as my learned friend Mr. Michuki has said, being amongst others the allegations of infanticide. Now, going back to the substance of my submissions, I will elaborate on what I said when I was doing the opening address. That the entirety of this case is not founded on any document on the part of the accusers. There is no document, for instance, on the part of Dennis who says he bribed to show that indeed he had any money with which he could have given to the deputy governor to constitute a bribe from him to the deputy governor. There is no document from his brother to show that indeed the arrest was based 
on any other issue other than the dispute as to who was the owner of the trees. There is no document on the part of Lucy to suggest that indeed, other than the fact that money was sent by reason of a, 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 an error, there is nothing to suggest that indeed that money was based on an understanding of corruption. And so, at the end of the day then, Honorable Senators, you will have to make a determination on this issue on the basis of who to believe. And the competition in terms of who to believe in this case would be his brother, versus, uh, his brother Robin versus Dr. Robert. It will be Mr. and Mrs. Misati, Mr. Misati being 68 years old, retired civil servant, Judge Koa, versus his son who is 37 years old. Who do you choose to believe? And we already indicated to you that the wife of Mr. Misati sworn affidavit, which we are relying on, and we produced the MPSA uh, uh, paper trail. I am aware that my colleagues have said that the wife was maintained in this case as a decoy. And we are saying that cannot be true because we brought you the MPSA record. And the husband had testified on the, on the issue uh, being the background of how that money was raised and was remitted. So you would have to make a choice of who to believe between the son and the father. And in the event you have any doubt, it is our contention that considering the standard of proof that this uh, Honorable Senate has adopted as prescribed by both the Court of Appeal and the Supreme Court, the benefit of doubt should go to Dr. Monda. We would also pray that in considering this, you be careful that you do not end up with a situation where you allow a national senate to be a forum for determination of family disputes. All the witnesses and the entirety of the case that the county assembly has brought is founded and based on family. Now, I would like to digress at this point and just point out to you like this that we have brought material with which we have contended that the reason why the deputy governor is standing trial is because of the issues he has raised to the governor and that the governor then has initiated these proceedings for the deputy governor's impeachment. Now, We would pray very much that in the, in the course of your consideration of this impeachment motion, that motive, that reason for having brought this case be a dominant factor in your minds. But more importantly, the decision having been made and determination having been arrived at that, you, you must, that he must be subjected to impeachment, the fact that they were not able to find any case of either procurement uh, misappropriation of funds, uh, an accountability of any other issue. The fact that the most that they could come with to you for impeachment, that the only thing they could come is through families, through his brother, through his, the son of uh, Mr. Misati, to spoil the friendship, that that is the only thing they could, they could come up with. We submit, honorable senators, is an indication of just how impeccable the deputy governor is, that they couldn't get anything other than to go through families to, to initiate and um, engineer uh, these uh, uh, impeachment proceedings. Now, before I come to the standard of proof, I would want to just invite your attention also to the fact that the main allegations in this, in this uh, before this Senate for impeachment being whether or not he received a bribe from Dennis, whether he gave a, a bribe to Lucy, whether he threatened Dennis, whether he misused the county staff, and whether he is culpable for having his brother arrested, are all issues that are in the hands of institutions and agencies that you as legislators, as lawmakers, have designated to take responsibility of investigating and determining. The three first counts being the question of whether he received a bribe from Dennis, whether he gave a bribe to Lucy, and whether he actually threatened Dennis are all issues 
which the witnesses readily admit are in the hands of the Ethics and Anti-Corruption Commission. The issue of whether he, caused, he improperly caused the arrest of his brother is an issue before the police. And the issue of whether or not there was misuse of the county staff, the witness came and said is in the hands of the county assembly. With that in mind then, we would like the question to occur to you as you entertain the question of whether or not to impeach as to whether you will choose to intercept a process of investigation by ESCC, by the police, and by the Kisi County Assembly, you will intercept that process, take over the process, and make a decision on it. Or you would rather wait for the determination of the cases before those agencies, which you yourself, as legislators, have already determined should make those decisions. Now, my colleagues for the County Assembly, <coughs> have relied on two cases. And those two cases are of very doubtful basis. The first one is the very repeated story of one Nancy Parasa having pinched somebody's nose. That's one thing they are relying on to persuade you that you should impeach the deputy governor. The other one they are relying on is the rep repeated reference to Watergate. Now, uh, honorable senators, we would like on our part to bring you nearer home on what you yourselves have said and in terms of your standard of proof for purposes of determining impeachment. And the first point, the first threshold is the provisions of Article 181 of the Constitution. Article 181 of the Constitution 1, A and, A and C require that before you come to the conclusion that there is reason to impeach a deputy governor, or rather a governor, you need to be satisfied that indeed there is cross violation. And our question then to you would be, on all the five counts, on the allegation of a bribe from Dennis, uh, giving a bribe to Lucy Waito, the allegation, the, threat, the alleged threat to Dennis, the alleged misuse of county staff, the alleged arrest of the brother. Do you come to the conclusion that indeed there is cross violation? The other criteria is found at Article 181, 1B being that there is a serious reason to, be, to believe that a crime has been committed. And we submit, honorable members, that based on the analysis of facts that my colleague who came before me has made of the facts, and which I will look at again briefly in a short moment, we submit that there is no manifestation of any gross violation of the law, and there is no serious reason to believe there is any crime that was committed. And further, in applying that criteria, when you are considering the question of whether or not to impeach uh, the Honorable Governor, His Excellency Honorable Iria, you, through your special committee, you said that in the event an issue is in the hands of an investigative agency, then that investigative agency should be allowed to conclude their proceedings. And in that case, you say the EACC and the Public Procurement and Oversight Authority should be given room to conclude the process. And if they come to a conclusion that they is, there is indeed any wrongdoing, then they can come back to the Senate through the uh, County Assembly. And we are requesting that you apply the same standard, that having pointed the witnesses of the prosecution and I'm saying prosecution in this case uh, being the county assembly. Having come and readily told you these issues are in the police hands, these issues are in the hands of ESCC, these issues are being investigated by the county assembly uh, functions. Having said that, it brings you irresistibly to the need of maintaining the same position you took in a real case, being that this is a case that in fairness should be left to those agencies to conclude, as you did in that case, and that you apply the same standard uh, as you did, uh, you apply the same standard in the case of Dr. Monda as you did in the case of Honorable Iria. 
the same position was taken in the case of Professor Chepwanyi, Kerijo, uh, uh, Kerijo County Governor, where you said, before you as a Senate can step in, you need to ha satisfy yourself that all other oversight agencies and mechanisms have been exhausted, and that it is not proper that the Senate is the default option every time somebody feels like there is a fight between a brother and brother over trees, there is a fight about whether or not there is an abortion, there is a fight as to whether or not uh, there was an error in pressing a letter G as opposed to letter H in the case of the Lucy. And so we are saying, uh, honorable members, the same way you decline to entertain the case of Professor Chepon, please decline to entertain the case of Professor uh, of Dr. Uh, Monda to the extent to which the other agencies that exercise oversight have not been exhausted and they are not a default option. We also rely on the determination made after this Senate had had the case, in the case of Songo, which was determined, Honorable Songo, which was determined at the Supreme Court, that when considering the question of whether or not there is an excess warranting the need for impeachment, the evidence should be credible and there should be evidence of extraordinary wrongdoing. And I just want to put a lot of premium on the use of the word extraordinary wrongdoing. And we submit, honorable senators, that in the case of Dr. Monda, when you are told that there was a bribe given to Dennis by, the, the, that Dennis gave the governor a bribe, when you are told that, and then Dr. Monda comes to you and tells you, number one, the money did not belong to Dennis, it belonged to his parents. Number two, Dennis did not participate in the discussions about that money. He has no idea what was discussed before the money was sent. When you're given that kind of evidence, where, in fairness, with what reasonable measure would you say there is extraordinary wrongdoing to be found in the conduct of Dr. Monda? When the father of, the, of Dennis is saying, it was my money, I was refunding a debt, uh, a loan, uh, some money I had taken earlier on, a loan that I had taken earlier on. We are asking, where is the extraordinary wrongdoing? Where is the gross violation? Where is the serious crime in the issue of the 100,000 to Lucy Wahito? It is a fact that indeed money went to the empress of Lucy Wahito. But we pray that you juxtapose that point with number one, the point we've made that it was an error. Now, I am aware from the questions that you asked uh, Dr. Monda in the course of um, his evidence <coughs> as to the question of whether he has MPSA up, why he slept without seeing who the man had gone to, and so on and so forth. But all that said, all that said and done, if I were uh, Mr. Ndegwa would refer you to the Bible and say, throw the first stone if indeed you can say none of you who has a fault in this Senate has never made a mistake to send money to a wrong person. And we pray that to the extent, I would want to imagine that 100% of you have done. But even if it's not 100%, I'm sure most of you have done. Please do not throw a stone in the direction of Dr. Monda merely because he made a mistake that any of you could have done and is, or, or, or is otherwise likely to do. And for those people who are skeptical about whether or not the mistake was there, we pray that number one, where you have doubt, that doubt should be exercised to the benefit of Dr. Monda. On the allegation of threats to Dennis, Dennis says that the threats were communicated to him through his father. His father comes and says, I have never been told anything that constitutes or amounts to a threat to Dennis. And so, with that kind of a situation where Dennis readily admits that I never spoke with Dr. Monda, 
and says that threat was communicated to, through the father, and the father says there was no such threat. Where do you find cross violation? Where do you find serious basis to assume that a, a, serious, a crime has been committed? Where do you find a basis to say there was an extraordinary wrong committed as was determined in the case of His Excellency uh, Honorable Songo? On the issue of the county staff, we are all, the witness came and readily considered that it, the deployment of the staff is not exercised by the deputy, by the deputy governor. The staff are assigned to him. He doesn't have a say on who is to be sent there. Now, if, as that witness said, it were to turn out that the wrong type of staff was sent there, that there are enforcement officers who are sent to cook, and were to cook for dogs, as Mr. Ndegwa said. If that were to be the case, whose mistake is it? Is it, are you going to impeach Dr. Monda for having been sent enforcement officers to go to the kitchen, or are you going to ask that the county, assembly, uh, the county enforcement officer and their public service commission do account for that? We pray that you do find that that point as to whether or not the right staff were there cannot be pegged on the head and on the shoulders of Dr. Monda. Now, the issue of the 20 enforcement staff, you saw clips being, there were attempts to play clips and so on and so forth. Nowhere did you see the 20 staff, the 20 enforcement officers going to effect arrest on uh, uh, Ropen, the, the brother of Dr. Monda. There's nowhere where there's any evidence of 20 people going there. But assuming even for argument's sake that that was the case, I would pray and plead to persuade you, Honorable Senators, that the real question here is whether or not Robin and Robert had a dispute over trees. And that is cast in stone. It is an absolute fact that indeed the two of them had a dispute over trees, and the witness who brought this complaint came here and said that. Number two, it is an absolute fact that the report was taken to the police. Three, it is an absolute fact that it is the police who effected the arrest and took uh, Ruben to the police station. He was not taken to the cells belonging to Kisi County, where then you would come and draw a conclusion that probably the enforcement officers were in charge of that process of the arrest. With all those grounds, if you were to be inclined or to be tempted to deem a wrongdoing to have obtained, shouldn't the OCS of the relevant police station have been summoned instead of having summoned Mr. Agai? Shouldn't that have been the person to be summoned to come and say whether indeed there were 20 enforcement officers and whether there was a basis for the need to arrest the brother? We pray that you do find that on the premises of that issue, there is no manifestation there is no manifest manifestation of cross violation. There is no re reason to deem that a crime was committed, and there is nothing extraordinary that uh, there is nothing negatively extraordinary that uh, Dr. Monda did to warrant the need for him to be subjected to impeachment. Lastly, on that issue of the most enforcement officers. the witness, Mr. Guy, came here and produced three letters. All the three letters are very consistent in what they say. They all say that the sub-county enforcement officer is the one who went with those officers. So assuming those people went, and we are saying there is no evidence that they went, even assuming they went there, there is nowhere where the hand of the deputy governor can be said to have existed in the deployment of those officers. For those reasons, then, uh, honorable senators and uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, sir, we pray that you come to the conclusion that indeed, on the allegations brought against Dr. Monda, there is no evidence of cross misconduct, there is no evidence of him having committed any serious crime, and there is no evidence of him having abused his office or having, conduct, having done anything extraordinary to warrant the need to hold him liable for um, impeachment. I would like to 
cover a few of the other grounds that my colleagues have, uh, have raised in the uh, submissions. One is the issue of bursaries. Now, several times in the course of our presentation of our evidence, we kept being told, what is the relevance of the issue of the change of the budget from the original budget passed by the uh, assembly to the budget that was submitted to the controller of budget? What is the relevance of, uh, where is the basis of the allegation that, uh, or rather the point that the governor has migrated from he, the official offices to his home, and so on and so forth. We pray that as you go, as you reflect on this case also, the question occurs to you, what is the relevance of making the allegation that Dr. Monda is responsible for the infanticide? That has not been proven. 